God bless your house of praise family. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Amen. God has given me something I'd like to share with you briefly here tonight. And uh, God has always given me something to feed you with and things that come into my heart. And this one was a download at the early hours of the morning a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I guess. I woke up very early in the morning. It was still dark. And the Holy Spirit started to download this into my spirit. I grabbed my phone, which I always keep near by, and, uh, and started to type as fast as I could so I didn't miss any of this wonderful download from the Holy Spirit. So let's, let's get right into it now. The Word of God is rich. It's always good. And the Bible is um, a light to our path. Amen. So this is a good thing tonight. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. Let's pray and we'll get right into it. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful time. Bless our time together. Lord, open up our minds and hearts. Lord, may the power of the Spirit just encourage us, enrich us, O God. And may we hear the voice of God and send the spirit of revival, Father, into our church and into South Jersey. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I guess this is really close on my heart right now because there's a, this great breaking out in that university over in Kentucky where God is really moving among the students and staff and and uh, over the last week or so, it's a, it, I, I think there was a chapel service that never ended. <laughs> I think if I understand it correctly, they had a chapel service and it just never ended. They just kept on going. It's like almost a week now or maybe over a week. I think it's like eight days or something. And it's just been going 24 hours a day. So God is God is moving and doing something and we're excited. And may Lord may in the in the name of Jesus God bless these kids, bless these students and teenagers and, and young people, God, may there be a real change in their heart. Because that's really the proof of real revival when there's a change. Amen. When there's something dramatically changed in the church and our families and marriages and in our lives. Amen. So I, 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 just, I just know that this is going to be a really special time. So we're excited about that. We just wanted to mention that to you and that we are following that very, very closely. You know, uh, the Lord gave me something uh, that he told me to to just, um, just name it. Why the test? Okay. Why the test? Why is God doing what he's doing? There's a lot of difficult things that we've been dealing with and a lot of challenges that we've had. And it's all good because I, I just know God just loves us. He's drawing us into himself. Amen. And if God knows everything and he knows whether we're going to fail or, or pass the test and he's the omniscient God, okay, why the test? Well, we're going to answer that question. Okay. He was not setting Adam and Eve up for failure. <laughs> That's not what it was. Not our God. He loves us so much. He wants to see us be successful in everything and enjoy the kingdom of God in its fullness. Amen. And uh, But he was setting them up for life. Amen. And then when we have difficulties in our life, that's what he's doing with us. He's setting us up for life. L-I-F-E. Amen. Listen to the pastor now. You know, the kingdom of God is something that we've been just getting so much download on that. And the Holy Spirit's been speaking to us in so many different ways over the last month or maybe even two months. It's been quite a while now. It seems like I have to interweave that in almost every message that we teach and preach and, and different services and times of worship and all that we're doing seems like it involves, you know, understanding the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom of God is not a place we go. It's not a place somebody thought it was a, a place we go after we die or what? No. The kingdom of God is a spiritual entity. Amen. It's a spiritual entity and it truly is the presence of God without a doubt. Amen. It's included, uh, you know, the, the entire uh, infinite universe it is in the kingdom of God. So looking at it from that large perspective, absolutely, all the billions of galaxies and planets and heavenly bodies and stars, all that which exists inside of God, not the other way around, that's all part of God's kingdom without a doubt. But think about it, you know, that, that's on the broad scope. But then Jesus said, the kingdom of God will not come with observation, amen, but it's within us, amen. It's within us, amen. And of course, we know that, and we use that clip 
But Nic Nicodemus is an incredible, famous meeting with Jesus at night. And when Jesus attempted to explain what the kingdom of God was all about, amen, and wasn't taking care of the Romans or removing taxation. That's what that's what you know they thought it was all about, but it wasn't that at all. It was on a much higher level. It was to deal with sin. It was to deal with drawing man closer to God. Amen. And the reconciliation after the great fall. So God created us to worship Him. Everything that He created was to worship Him. Amen. Yeah, if the stars will worship him, so will I. If the trees and fields worship him, so will I. Amen. If God's creatures are worshiping him, I believe every moo out of every cow, amen, is a worship to God, without a doubt. There, there is no question in my mind that everything that he created was to worship him and to love him and have fellowship with him. God is so wonderful. He is so incredible. It's beyond our comprehension. Yes, that is why we're here. We have been created to worship him. Amen. In return, he offered mankind so much perfection. I like to use that word, perfection. Can't use it too often, but in this case, absolutely, it fits. Okay? He offered mankind perfection. Amen. And uh, uh, that is what the Garden of Eden really represented. Uh, perfect joy, perfect health, no death, perfect provision, perfect relationship, perfection. Amen. And uh, I, 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 I just love to think about what God was just so excited. He must have been in like something that we can just relate to today, like a kid in a candy shop. Imagine that. He was so excited, I'm sure, about what his creation represented. And he was looking so forward to all this fellowship. And everything living in the kingdom of God was offered to mankind in all of its perfection. Now, let's talk about what happened here. Satan, okay, and he came in the form of a serpent, the Bible tells us, in the book of Genesis. But when he was the covering cherub in heaven, he was beautiful. He was magnificent. The most magnificent of all the created angels, without a doubt. And his name was Lucifer. And he was the guardian of the throne of God. He was also the worship leader in heaven. The worship leader in heaven. The scriptures indicate that. And he, of course, he enjoyed the same blessing. But in his pride, he wanted to be like the Most High God. So God in his righteousness and his holiness had to cast him out. Amen. He was cast out of heaven. And taking many, many fallen angels with him. It's hard to believe that Lucifer was that powerful as a charismatic leader. Think about this. That all these angels, like one third of the angels in heaven, were drawn with him and, and cast out of heaven. It, it just It's just hard to believe in it when you think about it. He must have been an incredibly powerful leader, without a doubt. We could read all about Satan's or Lucifer's fall. Uh, you can go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter, and read from 12 to 15. It talks about it. These are prophetic writings. And Ezekiel also had a vision on this, and he wrote it in Ezekiel 28 and 16. And then also St. John the Revelator uh, writes about it in the book of Revelation the 12th chapter, the 9th through the, uh, the 7th through the 9th verses. And they're the scriptures that are, are, are like go-to scriptures on understanding the fall of Lucifer and what happened there. The deceiver, Satan, or Lucifer, lied to Eve and to Adam, and they chose what looked like was the best choice for them. They had a choice between the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees in the garden. And of course, God said, don't touch that tree. That is what? The knowledge of what? The good and evil. Or else you will die instantly. And of course, you know, Satan, he said, you will not surely die. Come on, that's not going to happen. You'll become like God's. And I'll tell you, that was one time he was he was saying the truth there. I mean, you know, it's it's 
he, they were going to die because they were going to be separated from God, but then they will know things that God never intended for them to know. Amen. And it totally destroyed, okay, all of their incredible perfection that God had for them. Amen. The great fall happened, which separated mankind from Father God and separated them from the source of all life. Amen. So it was it was an incredible lie what what the devil said that you will not surely die. Yes, they immediately died. We're not talking about caskets, flowers, rigor mortis. We're talking about separation from Father God. And to answer the first question, get back to the original question, why the test? Well, God had to put Adam and Eve to the test for the simple reason that love, which was the foundation of everything that God did, had to be built on trust, and trust must be proven. And it's the same way today. Even in a normal marriage between a man and a woman, it involves trust, and trust must be proven and tested. Amen. So could Adam and Eve be faithful, or would they have to learn a hard lesson? And of course, we know what happened. God had given them the power of choice, and guess what? Today, we still have that power of choice. Amen. God has given us the power of choice, the same as he had given to Adam and Eve. And as we see the, uh, from the scriptures, they failed the test quite easily. And uh, this, however, should remind us of the words of Jesus when he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Draw close to me. Stay close to me. Don't drift away. Amen. You see, true love is not just a good feeling, guys. Amen. We know that. But it requires trusting and trusting must be tested. It requires respecting and obeying the one that you love, especially when this one that you're referring to is God. Amen. It's true even in our natural life, but especially when it involves a relationship with God the Father. In every relationship, there's a time of learning and testing, and this was their moment. This was theirs. In life, we will always be given choices. Amen. God will always give you choices, and what we love determines what we choose. Amen. Isn't that the truth? If we love ourselves more than we love God or love other people, then we will choose what we want, and that's what the Bible calls selfishness, self-centeredness. Amen. And of course, by doing that, we hurt others. Amen. And that's exactly what we hurt God and we hurt others. Amen. Again, Jesus made it clear that nobody can serve two masters. Can't be done. Okay. Um, in life, there are many, many choices and many times there are things, uh, different things vying for our allegiance, if you will, or to be our master. And the one that you obey is the one that is your master. Amen. So the question is, who are you obeying and who is your master? And that's a question that you've got to answer. Amen. God already had a plan ready for Adam and Eve's failure. And it was the one, capital O-N-E, uh, one, okay? And it was one of love and mercy. It was the revelation of the kingdom of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you come across the many choices you have to make in this life, remember to seek God with all of your heart and what he wants. Amen. And of course, because he wants the very best for you at all times. So complying with him is so wise and all the best. He wants all the best for you at all times. Amen. We're going to talk about that a little more in just a second. Our prayers are always answered by God. God showed me this as I was feverishly typing on my phone that morning a few weeks ago. And uh, sometimes he says yes to our prayers because it's the right prayer, the right timing. And God says, absolutely, yes. Then other times he says, not now, maybe later. Okay. Not now because it is better to wait. And sometimes he says no. And when he says no, it's because he has something better for you. Amen. It's not the correct prayer not the right time. And he says, nope, not now. Okay. So sometimes he says, yes. Sometimes he says, not now, not to wait. And then other times he says, no. But if he does say no, it's because he's got something better. 
I guarantee that because all his plans for us are good so that we will have a beautiful expected end, amen, and an exciting future. <clears throat> He's always got something better in line, amen. There's no question about it. He always has a way to repent and come back as well. So when we do fail, there's always a path back. There always is a path back, amen. God's original intention was that we would always live in the kingdom with him. Mankind, at the great fall, chose to satisfy his own fleshly desires and turn down God's offer of the kingdom benefits. Amen. We read in Psalm 103, one of our favorite passages, you know, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. That was King David saying that his soul was commanding him to bless God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. Commanding his soul to bless God. Amen. Very, very important passage. Jesus Christ came to us to restore the kingdom of God to us. Amen. And uh, he had a hard time explaining that to his disciples, to his, to his followers, and to Nicodemus that night, which I mentioned, and because they thought he was coming to destroy Rome and get rid of the Romans, get rid of the taxation problems. And that's not really why he was coming at all. He said, I'm coming to deal with sin. That was at a much higher level. So if he can deal with sin, if he can get that, if he can get man reconciled to Father God, all the other things would take care of itself. Amen. Have to worry about taxes. You don't have to worry about the Romans anymore. That's for sure. We receive this incredible blessing when we receive Jesus as our Savior. Amen. Uh, you know, like, how do you tap into the blessings of the kingdom of God? Receive Christ as your Savior. Amen. The Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, -O, which is salvation and healing and divine health, divine provision and perfect relationship inside the kingdom of God with him. Amen. So it was very clear. It was made very clear in scripture as we can see it, that God intended this all to be taking place together. Amen. And just like I mentioned in a recent message, that when the paralytic was brought to Christ, he was born of four. So he had four friends carrying him, letting him down through the roof. And when he got on the floor of, of uh, Zebedee's house and, and Jesus looked at him, what did he say? He says, thy sins be forgiven, son. And of course, he really upset the Pharisees. And, and boy, they didn't understand what was going on there at all. But it was very simple. Okay. Healing is, is a byproduct of the righteousness of God. Amen. And the righteousness of God is imputed, imputed on us. Amen. And it was being imputed on the paralytic that day when Jesus said, thy sins be forgiven. And then, of course, when the Pharisees got upset, Jesus simply answered. He says, well, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? Take your bed and go home. Amen. Which we know it did happen. So he got forgiveness. He got redemption. He got healing. He got the whole kit and caboodle, so to speak. Everything. And that's what God intends for us. I believe that. And I'm here to declare this. I'm, this pastor will never stop declaring the kingdom of God. Jesus has given us a mandate to what? Go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, and preach the kingdom of God. I will never, never, as long as I have breath in these lungs, I will praise him and I will declare the kingdom of God because that's what our mandate is. Amen. So while we're going through the test, it's very important to keep in mind that his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. Isaiah 55 talks about that, that great chapter. Make sure you read Isaiah 55, the whole chapter. And his thoughts are always higher than our thoughts, for he is the creator and we are the creation. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. But his thoughts and plans for us are always to give us his best all the time 
all the time, period. It's never anything less than the best. That's why we should never settle for less than God's best. Amen. Sometimes we get something that looks good enough and say, oh, we'll just accept that and go with it. No, it's it, it, that's never the will of God. God wants us to have his best. I believe it with all of my heart because that's what the scriptures say. And I told you when we were going to start uh, our teaching series uh, on From the Pastor's Heart on Healing 101, that we were going to go right back to the Word of God. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? What does the Red say? What does the Word of God talk about healing and restoration of health? Doesn't matter what you feel. Doesn't matter what anybody else preaches. Doesn't matter what I feel. Doesn't, none of those things matter. It's what Jesus said is the only thing that matters. Amen. And it's what we read in the Word. You know, I just believe with all my heart that when God does test us and allow things so that we can draw closer to Him, so that we can become a better person, so that our faith can grow, so that we can become and develop into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's always a good thing, even if it takes some difficult moments to get us there. Amen. Believe me, my brother, the test is always a good thing. Amen. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness and everything else that you need will be added unto you. Amen. And that's in Matthew 6 and 33. So why the test? Somebody said, well, I don't understand that. I, I can't imagine why. I, I know we, we've been watching The Chosen and, and uh, you know, it shows Peter going through some hard times in his life. Didn't seem to understand why he had to face certain things. And and, uh, you know, and of course, we've all been in that situation, right? Why? What, what, what's going on? You know? Well, let me tell you, the test is always good. Amen. Because God is drawing you close. He just wants to, he, he wants you to feel his heartbeat. Like John the Apostle, it actually says in the book of John, where John would lay his head on Jesus' shoulder, even on his chest. And I believe he wanted to feel his heartbeat. Amen. He just loved him so much. He became, he actually was transformed from being one of the sons of thunder. Remember him and brother, his brother James, big James and John were sons of Zebedee and they had a nickname called the sons of thunder. In other words, they had tempers and they had anger problems. And God healed all that. And I just love it when John, you know, talks about even at the Last Supper, and he, he talks about John just laying his head on the breast of Jesus. Amen. He just wanted to just get close. So much love, so much regard, so much respect. And who was around when Jesus was hanging on the cross? It was John. John was there, and then Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there, and Jesus looked at Mary and said, you know, son, receive your mother. Then he looked at Mary and he said, mother, go with your son. Here is your son. And uh, it was reported from that day on that John took Mary, the mother of Jesus, into his own home. And uh, on the day of Pentecost, which was 50 days after the resurrection, it actually mentions there in Acts the second chapter that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was among the 120 that were in the upper room when the Holy Spirit fell on the church. Amen. Very, very precious relationship that Jesus had with his mom. Amen. And that's a beautiful thing. Amen. I'm just so excited about sharing this little tidbit with you. Why the test? When God knows what we're going to do anyway, you know, he's just trying to prove our relationship with him. He's trying to prove how much we love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I just had to share this with you on this thirsty Thursday. I trust that it'll be a blessing to you. I just trust that this will be a great time that you can look and back and say, wow, you know, those few minutes I spent with Pastor Steve on that thirsty Thursday really impacted my thinking, impacted my life because God loves me so much. 
even though Satan did his best to destroy, but Jesus came to redeem. Amen. I always say this way, and this is such an important thing to understand, that on Good Friday, the day that Christ died, which was also on Passover, okay, that was the day that death died. Amen. Because we were set free from all the works of the enemy. And uh, so all we have to do is accept him as our personal savior and we can be inducted, if you will, into this wonderful kingdom of God. It's such a beautiful thing. Why don't we pray right now? Would you do that? And uh, I love to do this at the end of my teaching. If there's anybody out there watching this video that just don't know what I'm talking about or maybe have never had an encounter with this Jesus that we're talking about, he loves you so much. We cannot comprehend the love of God. It can't be done. He loves us so much. Why don't you bow your head right now? Oh, I know you're busy, but you know, put that down, what you're doing, and maybe sit or kneel if you want to, whatever you want to do, whatever you're comfortable with. There's no focus on that. <clears throat> and I just know that this will be a precious moment. Let's pray together, shall we? Let's do it right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Thank you. Thank you for revealing yourself to me. Thank you for this wonderful hope that we have. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for failing you, Lord. I knew better in so many cases and still did it anyway. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me, oh God, and take all my sin and failure away. Fill me with the Spirit of God. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I accept Jesus. I accept you, Lord, as my personal Lord and Savior. And as of this moment, I know that I'm secure in eternal life. God, I thank you for these wonderful promises. And uh, I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, if you prayed that prayer, you took a giant step toward understanding the kingdom and, and starting to live in the kingdom of God. Certainly live in this wonderful blessing that God has for us. You know, all his plans for us are good. I have not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has it even entered in to the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love and trust him. We haven't even gotten, not even... Uh, not even an inkling of revelation yet. Maybe some, but we have so much more to go. What God's going to reveal, the good things that he has in store for us and our families, our children, our grandchildren, and everything to do with us. So God bless you. Have a wonderful evening and good night.